This video is sponsored by Blue Apron. Growing up in Minnesota, the winters can kind of suck. Very cold and lots of snow. But at least the summers here are amazing. Except when the bugs come out, from around May through October. But besides that, it's super awesome. Those two weeks a year are really great. Usually going outside in the summer without some kind of insect repellent was unimaginable and a recipe for a horrible experience. But how do these repellents even work? And how could you make one yourself? To find out, I'm gonna use a few plants I'm growing in my garden and attempt to make my own. It takes millions of specialized, skilled experts around the world to produce the countless items we use every day. But could an average person do everything to make all these items alone? Well, that's what I try to attempt. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. Bugs like mosquitoes track down their prey through a few methods, smell, sight, and heat. Their biggest clue is a smell, where they can smell CO2 exhaled by their prey, as well as several other compounds. These smells can help them find a host from 10 to 50 meters away, and bug spray helps protect you by masking these clues with their own chemical compounds, turning you nearly invisible to the mosquitoes and other bugs. A few different plants are known of being able to offer this masking in addition to synthetic compounds like DEET. So I collected as many potential plants as I could to help extract their helpful elements. I've collected a few different plants here that are potentially used for bug repellent. I have some citronella, I have some basil from my closet garden, I have some lemongrass, some rosemary from my garden, and some catnip that Dobby helped me track down. Now the next step is to actually extract the chemicals in each of these plants that act as a bug repellent. You can do that by basically making essential oil of each of these plants. This is the exact same process I went through before when I attempted to extract peppermint oil for my toothpaste, except I didn't have the right equipment and it all got messed up. It didn't work at all. I have a biomass flask that is a much more appropriate size, a whole different distillation setup that seals a lot better, and then a stronger water pump so I can actually pump it from the right direction. Hopefully it'll all work out now and basically going to do steam distillation. I'm gonna boil some distilled water down here. It's gonna go through the plant mass and the bio flask. It's gonna capture all the essential oils. They'll then condensate, but then I'll have essential oils and be able to make my bug spray. After distilling, I poured it into a separating funnel to separate the extracted essential oils from the watery hydrosol. Now that I have a few possible essential oils that should hopefully be bug repellent, now I just need to turn it into actual bug spray. I'm here with John who makes his own bug cream. What's the basic ingredients that you use? I use two basic oils. I use coconut oil, which you can buy at any grocery store. I use beeswax. I use shea butter. So I haven't made my own shea butter. Is it possible to substitute that with like cocoa butter? It should be fine. Both are very good at holding scent. So they're good with any kind of essential oils. And then I use a mix of essential oils. It's a combination of equal parts of citronella and eucalyptus. So basically you just melt everything yeah. and put it in a cup and pour it in jars. Pretty easy process. It's wonderful for your skin. It just happens that these essential oils keep bugs away. So I've had it tested in India and in Jamaica and in Alaska and extensively in Minnesota. Compares just as good to commercial brands? Right, and the nice thing is because of the ingredients we use, it's safe for kids. And how long does it usually last? Depending on your body chemistry, two to three hours, so you do have to reapply it. Just wanna demonstrate to me how you would mix this all together then? The shea butter is probably liquid enough. I pour that in first. I use four ounces of coconut oil, and it's kinda gloppy, but we'll be melting it before we pour it. We need to melt the wax. That we may want to do in the microwave. Yeah. And melt it. You also add that to the mixture. What that does is it keeps it solid at room temperature, okay. so it makes it portable. And then I also add the essential oil. Oh, that's half an ounce? A quarter ounce. Quarter ounce. And then that should be melted one more time to make sure the wax is thoroughly melted. And then you just pour them in. Go, Go to it. it. It'll set up in about 10 to 15 minutes. 
John also mentioned his recipe for an actual spray version that just needs the essential oils, water, and some alcohol. I also want to try that, so next I'll need to distill some alcohol. But first, a word from our sponsor. Normally, there's not much time in our schedule to make a healthy meal, but thanks to Blue Apron, now it's possible for us to make a healthy meal that's quick, tasty, and from scratch. What a concept! Blue Apron delivers all the farm fresh ingredients you need right to your doorstep in exactly the right proportions. No trips to the grocery store and no waste from unused ingredients. Blue Apron allows you to create delicious, chef-designed recipes at home. They offer two types of plans, the two-person plan and the family plan. There are eight recipes from each week, and you can choose any combination of recipes you'd like, whether you prefer meat, vegetarian, or a combination of both. They encourage us to try exotic dishes that we normally wouldn't choose on our own. Blue Apron recipes are delivered in a refrigerated box, so ingredients will stay fresh even if you're not at home when your package arrives. And they ship to most of the country. There's no commitment, you can skip or cancel the service at any time. And prices start as low as $7.49 per serving. Instead of taking six months, this meal only took 30 minutes to make. Check it out. The first 100 people to sign up at the link below will get $50 off their first two weeks of Blue Apron. Last year I did a little bit of experiment trying to make crabgrass beer that did not turn out the greatest. It's pretty disgusting. It smells worse than it tastes, but it also doesn't taste good. So I'm gonna try and salvage it so I can distill out the alcohol and use it for other projects. So I have a distillation kit here, and it's actually a new kit that allows fractal distillation. So using a thermometer to gauge the uh, temperature of what's coming out of it, I can tell when it's methanol or ethanol, and the methanol is potentially toxic if you drink it. So once the temperature starts to raise above the boiling point of methanol, I can then just toss out everything that's come out and just get ethanol. Ultimately, it's not really that important because this is gonna be used topically, but I got a new kit, so I wanna try it out. Double distilled. Let's uh, test a little bit, make sure it's at least over 50% alcohol. Hmm, that's not very good. Wasn't flammable, which means it's over 50% water, so distill it once more. So in that giant jug of beer, this is about all the alcohol that there was. So after three distillations, have something that's at least 50% alcohol. I would estimate less than 1%, which puts it well within the non-alcoholic beer range. Still has a slight hint of that awful smell, so hopefully it doesn't attract any bugs. So I have all the essential oils I've extracted. They ended up being pretty trace. I'm just gonna combine all of them into one mixed component. I have the topical cream here to add to it, just ready to mix it in. It's uh, made of beeswax, cocoa butter, and coconut oil. I'm hoping with all of mine, I have enough to make both a topical cream and then also use some of my alcohol to make a bug spray. I'm curious how effective each of these individual essential oils are. So I bought some store-bought ones that I can also make some creams just so I can test and see what is the most effective of all of them. Lastly, I have the citronella from the citronella plant. I was curious why I didn't get a large yield. It's like one of the smallest ones. And then I looked it up and it's actually apparently a whole myth that despite this being sold as a mosquito plant, it does not contain the actual citronella oil. Citronella oil that you use in actual bug spray comes from the lemongrass. That was surprising. All right, let's get started. Pretty close. Then for the bug spray, I have some more oil that I saved and I have the ethanol alcohol that I distilled. It produced pretty much just enough. I'm gonna add that, about a tablespoon to half a cup of water, add it to this little spray bottle. I don't think I spilled enough. Oh no! Oh no, he doesn't know what he's doing! Mm, smells really good. If nothing else, it makes good cologne. Now, I just need to field test my bug repellents and see how well they work. For my best bet, I decided to go to one of the most mosquito-ridden areas we've previously filmed at, the Minnesota Valley Wildlife Refuge. This one on the camera. So I have my spray and cream repellent on my left side of my body. Right side is all natural for a control, and I will see which side gets more bites. Bite me. There's another one. My hat! Joey and Chris are gonna try out all the other essential oils and see if they can find a difference between them. Look at all that blood he's collecting for me. Or she. You see that thing? It was huge. I got a couple of bites before putting them on. Skeeter, skeeter, skeeter. This is weird. Oh, he's getting way in there. I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, I got a bite on this finger. 
Why don't we smear some uh, lavender up and down here? Right, can I try basil? Beforehand, I had gotten bit a few times. I don't want to get bit again, but I will, because I always get bit. There's another one. It's because you're so sweet. Yeah, so, so sweet. That's what mama always said. I just get bit more than most people do. I don't know why. Which ones are you trying on? Rosemary and catnip. Afterwards, saw a couple of mosquitoes land and then fly off. Oh God, there's one right there. Yeah. A mosquito landed on the basil arm, but immediately after landing on it, it took off. He doesn't like basil or lavender. It seemed like the scent of the basil wore off a little sooner than the lavender. The lavender still smells good. So the interesting thing is that the temperature dropped just this week and that's made the mosquitoes a lot less aggressive. The bugs are out and they are biting, just not as fierce as they normally are. The bug spray I made myself appears to be working. I think they were effective. I would definitely go with the lavender. The basil just makes you smell a little too delicious. They work. Moral of the story is rub catnip all over your body. I haven't gotten a single bite on this arm or the side of my body. Well, this side, I've gotten several bites and at least moderately effective. This isn't quite as effective a test as I wanted, so I think I'm gonna try and order a batch of research mosquitoes. It'll take a few weeks and then uh, put, put it to a more controlled test and uh, maybe get some more accurate numbers on this. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.